That is not far. Give her money for her bravery so her family is set? I wish I could. I wish I could be like, yeah, regardless of what happens, I'm going to support your family. That'd be kind of nice. Oh, there's Bartholomew. Let's talk to him. He was not... He actually... Bartholomew bugged out in our first playthrough. We completely lost him. So anytime you see Bartholomew moving forward, this is all brand new stuff. Leave, I don't want to ever see you again. That's the only option I haven't done. That's kind of funny. Let's begin. Glancing nervously at the various medical instruments, the brave peasant woman got up on the operating table. Just don't butcher me is all I ask, she muttered in a trembling voice. Meanwhile, the foremost medical experts in the room still couldn't agree on what exactly they were trying to do. Stop arguing with me. Coughing up blood is a sure sign of the problem is in the lungs. Well, look there, Jahad insisted. No, it's the no nausea we should be focusing on. We need to examine the stomach. Bartholomew, the mad, sadistic wizard, had been summoned here for some reason. He remained silent, checking the patient's pulse. The cleric turns to the Baron in desperation, asking him to resolve their dispute. After careful consideration, he decided, let's ask Bartholomew for help. A common manner of dispelling is useless here, I assume, the wizard said pompously. So then, let's try it at a higher level. He took a scroll out of his bag and solemnly cast a spell on the, the patient. Jihad used magical sight to see if there were any changes in the patient's body. It worked, he exclaimed excited. The magic is gone from all the organs except the stomach. You were right, my friend. Hurry now, hand me a scalpel. Candlelight reflected off the surgical instruments and potion bottles. As Jihad's scalpel made the first incision on the woman's skin, I could hear her inhale loudly through clenched teeth. I confess I lacked the courage to watch a surgery. Even after I turned away, I couldn't help but tremble from hearing the poor woman's screams. The air filled with the acrid scent of medical potions while Tristian mumbled prayers to ease the patient's pain, simultaneously scanning her body with magic sight. All I could do was whisper my own prayers, but the Baron, he didn't lose his courage. He... took the patient's hand and whispered something in her ear, distracting her from the pain. I couldn't hear exactly what he said, but it worked. Charmed by his words, the peasant woman managed to stay still and let the cleric perform the surgery. The poor woman's screams and crying were unbearable. I couldn't begin to imagine what she was going through. I'm such a fool, Jihad finally exclaimed. You were right. I'm glad we listened to you. Tristan used a healing spell to close the wound in the woman's stomach, and Jihad showed everyone the strange item he'd extracted. It looked like some kind of seed, a glowing, pulsing, thumb-sized seed. Before anyone could say anything, it flashed in Jihad's fingers. He dropped it on the floor just in time. On the spot where the seed landed, a portal opened, and a roaring monster jumped out. I shall end this suffering. Okay, cat, can you really not get there? Cat, I need you up here, bruh. Ah, good, perfect. Xanadu says, I heard it. Co whispered to her, Don't worry, I reapplied your Twitch Prime token to Co Carnage. That's ab that, I don't know how you knew that, but that's actually exactly what I whispered to her. Um, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Jihad wipes the sweat from his brow, not even noticing the blood still on his hands. Aristotle and Saren Ray be praised. They were truly on our side this day. It's a miracle. Tristian hands Jihad's a clean towel. Jihad pulls himself together and wipes his hands and face. So, what have we learned? We've learned I was a pompous fool, and Tristian was right all along. It's not a disease, but a parasite, something of vegeta vegetative origin. It resembles a seed. I'm sorry, my friend. I should have wagged my tongue less and listened to you more. Please don't mention it. It was a lucky guess, not worthy of your praise. Are you able to cure others of the disease now? Yes, yes. Now that we know what to do, we can extract the seed with much less risk to the patients and with much less suffering. What do we do next? There are still many patients here. We'll start to work on them immediately. And you, Your Grace, you may want to search for the source of this disease. We still know neither where the seeds come from or how they get into people's bodies. New patients arrive daily, and how many never even find their way to a hospital. Our efforts here are not enough by themselves. We need to find the root of this problem. Please find the source of those wretched seeds. Oh, man, we nailed this part. That was great. That was great. Thanks, Bartholomew, by the way. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's move. Hey, Drossian. Good to see you, bud. 
Yes, Bartholomew super helped here. As it should be. Ring song. Basically, the way that it works is with, Bar with uh, when Bartholomew is not here, you have to choose between Jihad and Tristian. But if you use Bartholomew, he just picks the right one, which is Tristian. So, pretty interesting. There's something important I wanted to discuss with you. It's not easy to admit, but recently the barony has grown so much that I feel it's slipping my grasp. Please ease my burden by finding someone for the position of Curator of Arts and Education. It's a huge weight off my shoulders. I have other news as well, which I'm sure you will find agreeable. As you know, our neighbor Galt has been in chaos for years. Their ever-changing rulers destroy that which goes against their fickle doctrines, including scientists and creators, but one of them was recently able to escape to your lands. He's a publisher of a newspaper whose headquarters in Galt were burnt down after false accusations of slander. He wishes to move to the capital where he will enjoy your protection and in exchange he has offered to found a new printing house. He escaped Galt with his plans for a printing machine with him and is ready to start business here. Um, with your permission and help, of course, I think it's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, not only to get our own newspaper, but to help an innocent man get back on his feet. What do you say? But we have Lindsay's printing shop. Why do we need another one? Lindsay publishes books, not newspapers. I doubt she'd be interested in this kind of endeavor, and our guest from Galt specializes in it. Oh, no. I just screwed up our barony. I just screwed up our barony. Co, your subjects are truly savages. My, how the peasants hate paying their taxes, as if they prefer the stag lords anyway. When you ran out of gold, you just kill everyone in the nearest village and pick the loot from their corpses. But here you come with your monthly tax collection, and for them it's nothing less than a nightmare. However, your people won't get off so easily. Numbers of them join the tax masters, followers of Abadar. They regard avoidance of taxes as a major personal offense. These tax masters wear golden masks and go from door to door and beat the gold out of your people along with their teeth. It is indeed the civilized approach. Um, I may be the only... It may be the only way to bring some sort of civilization to the forsaken corner of the world. However, if you allow this to continue, you will surely be called a tyrant. I urge you to act carefully. Address these taxmasters and let them know that they have gone too far, but don't disband them altogether. Yeah, act as you see fit. I like that. I like that. Okay. Okay, so let me, let me look here. Oh. oh my god. Potion of Shield of Dawn and Potion of Greater Invisibility. Uh, thank you. I still don't know why he's not giving me his big thing. He should be. If we're still serene, I'm going to be ecstatic. Oh, we're still serene. Oh, thank God. Okay. We're at minus 30 BP, though? Wait, what? I thought we would... I thought you automatically lost this if your BP went below... What's going on here? Yes, losed. That's the word, losed. It only checks at the beginning of the week? Oh. Yo, that's not how it was before. Oh, that's so great. That is so great. Um, wow, what a great, great, great change. Okay, hopefully I can, can I afford any more VP? Oh god. Um, we All may have to do like a, a serious sell here. Um, oh god, this is going to be tight. It's 24 hours, not a week, and I need a new advisor. Oh, I know. We're going we're gonna to go right back into there as soon as we can. I just, I need to get 30 BP. 31 BP this is what I'm going to go for. I also need a new advisor. I know. I know. Uh, it's 80 BP per... We need 31 BP, so we're going to need 5,600 gold. Okay, great. Awesome. Hmm. Uh, okay. We're only going to need like 2,400. So... What's it, like 20 of those? I'm not selling any health potions. I don't need all of those. Um, oh, we got the Masterwork Long Spear. Uh, I don't want to sell the Nymph's Gift. Let's do price descending. Not selling Ray's Dead. Don't want to sell my... I could sell 
I could sell a diamond. Oh, wow. Look at that. I'm not going to use that. 600? Hell yeah, dude. I'll sell those. Uh, I definitely want... Oh, I can sell the heroism. There we go. We got this. We got this. I can sell heroism because I always had that castable. Uh, yeah, we got this, boys. We got this. Boom. Boom. Okay, let's go take a look. Follow my lead. Is this a good way to get into the actual Pathfinder PNP? Oh, absolutely. But it is important to mention that it's very different to play the rule set of a PNP game in a, in a game, a computer game, as it is opposed to playing it normally. So even though you'll learn like a lot of the, <laughs> shut up Echo. Even though you'll learn a lot about like the rule set and the feats and how all that stuff works, um, it's gonna be a very different experience playing at PNP. Yeah, I mean, it's basically like turn-based versus real time. So you're, you're in, in for a, a different ride, if you follow me. Yeah. Thanks Hyperialist, exactly, exactly. Is this similar to Baldur's Gate? Yes. In fact, in my opinion, this is the best CRPG since Baldur's Gate 2. No foolies. Okay. Who is going to be our drama visor? Um, oh, Storyteller Bro. Sure. Welcome to the team, dude. I like you. Okay. Oh, no. I don't want to rank up anyone. No, no. We, we're officially in go time. We have started the, the main act of three, so we're going to work on that. Um, is there anything else I need to do before I leave? Do we, oh, wait. Let me, well, we can check this outside. Let's go ahead and get our party going. What kind of microphone do I use? A Shure SM7B. Oh, we'll, we'll talk to Casey on the way out, too, and see if we can get her next quest going. We are going to wait until after the main quest to do it, though. Oh, Nymphic. Nymphic, absolute best of vibes to you, man. I'm sorry. I am sorry. The only thing that I can say, Nymphic, and I know this is not the, the best thing that you want to hear right now, but it's important to understand. That when it comes far. to pets and saying goodbye to pets, you will do that a lot in your life. Since pets don't live nearly as long as we do in most cases. The important thing to remember is that you gave them the best that you can, and more importantly, especially if you're a younger person, just remember that every conclusion to a story can be the start of another one. So it absolutely sucks that you're losing your pooch and take as much time as you want. But with your current pooch's story ending, that just means that down the road, you're gonna be able to start a new adventure with another one and hopefully a rescue. And then you can give yet another person a great life. So, yeah, best of vibes to you, man. I'm sorry, it sucks. Last year was a really rough year for me. As I lost should be. both my old dogs. I lost my oldest cat, Torque. And, um, and it was really, really, really rough. Really terrible. All those have been with me for over a decade. And now, we have Booker. And I know that all of them had a great life. And uh, that's all we can really do. And now we have Booker. And, uh, and we have, you know, we have my three cats, Letho, Gary, and Siri. They're all amazing. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, it's just, it, the important thing to remember is to appreciate, as I'm sure they did you. And that's it. I'm done. Anyway, okay. Best of vibes to you, bud. Alov, stop yelling and listen to me. I'm trying to talk some sense into you. There's nothing to talk about, Alov. This is my home. Here I was born, and it's here I die. You dolt, that's what I'm saying. If you stay, you'll die before your time. Can't you see what's going on? Monsters, goblins, bandits, tune your back for a moment, and there's some fiend crawling right out of your neighbor's entrails. You talk too much. Just do your work. Pray to Aristotle and stay close to your home and family. That's all there is to it. We've seen worse. I, back when you were uh, half your age and unmarried, Eric, old friend, think about Jenny and your little ones. What if some beast comes knocking at your door? You're a woodcutter, not a swordsman. We have to leave the barony while we still can. I, Aristotle, have mercy, your grace. F Forgiveness, your grace. We were just discussing the crops. 
I understand that you are worried about your close ones and yourself, but hear me. Without loyal, upstanding people by my side, I can never rescue this realm from the evils plaguing it. If you stay, I'll swear I'll do everything in my power to put an end to this madness. Both men listen to you quietly, then look at each other, then clumsily bow to you. We understand, Your Grace. These are tough times indeed, and there are things, all sorts of things, you have to deal with. Don't you go listening to fools. The loyal and true will stand by your side. However, as soon as you're out of eyesight, we're both out of here. Okay, good talk. Uh, where's Casey's house? Is this Casey's house? Uh, I think it's this one. Save. How old is Letho now? Uh, Letho's birthday was just a little bit ago, and um, I think he's he's three or four now. Oh, the it's the the dudes. I can't believe it. Look who it is. If it isn't the Baron himself, I thought gentle folks didn't hang around their subjects home. Elkie slaps the young tiefling on the side of his head. Forgive him, your grace. He's got a big mouth. So big that when he comes to visit someone, his tongue enters first and talks rubbish for a few minutes before the rest of his head shows up. <laughs> the two are trying to say that your visit is a great honor for us. How can we help you? Don't say that we can't. There are many things we can do. Just try us. Tell me about yourself. Anytime. Okay. How do you know Kaliki? Our elder is the best. We've known her for many years. Uh, one time we prepared a lot of different sweets and wanted to sell them. We were sitting on the streets... They don't let you into the market without a fee. And then there were boys and girls in wonderful dress, obviously rich and noble, and with them an emberkin. So beautiful. She wanted to buy some sweets from us, but her friends scoffed at us and took her away. And it was Kaliki. She was the only pretending to be an Asamar, using an illusion. And Elki fell in love right away. Hey, what are you looking at? It's the truth. Well, she found us later and brought, bought us our sweets and started to keep, us, keep an eye on us. She called us the sweet teeth ever since, and our elder, we'd be lost without her. That's nice of her. The cult of the Dawnflower is the reason they left. The ones who honor Serenray for their scimitar she holds in her hand, but not for the kindness and mercy. They look at any tiefling like a hound looks at its prey. Like we can see what's inside you. You're just waiting to do some evil. Ugh, that's too bad. Our elder won't tell us this. She's modest like that, but she's the one who saved us from the raid. Oh, wow. Who are you to each other? Relatives? Friends? Us three were caught by a huge rock. It was so picky, it only fed on tieflings to its nestlings. So we met in its nest, but we escaped. But the bird chased us through all of Kalesh, asking us to return the treasures we took from its nest. It even tried to sue us, but the judge didn't speak birdish? What? <laughs> Excuse me? Um, how is life for you here? Everything is so strange here. The ground is cold. The trees are so green it hurts to look at them. And even the sky is strange. Uh, it's like we're in another world. We find something new every day. It's great. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, thanks for your answers. Uh, how'd you find out about the disk of the eclipse? We were walking at night in some complete darkness through an empty moonlit barren, and we got lost and stumbled into a scary thicket. But we saw light ahead, a witch's house. As soon as we got inside, she said that we are dummies who couldn't watch our tongues and threw us out. And the disk of the eclipse? We found out about it by accident. A peddler talked to us on the road and just gave us an ancient chronicle where we read about it. Wait, what? We accidentally used the Chronicle for kindling, but we remembered everything we read? Okay. <laughs> oh, look! And he's got a bunch of sweets. Applause, oh, please. that's great. 12 sweet syrups and 10 chocolates are chilling in the chest in the house. That's awesome. In oh my god, time. look at all this. Honey. More honey. Nice. Noctiv, it's been an hour. I'm in the menu trying to create my character. Too many class choices, send help. Oh, it's only been an hour? Congrats on starting the first 10th of your character creation adventure. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, I think, I, even though oh I knew God. what I was rolling, it still took me like it, two hours. Or, or what was it? I was looking at my YouTube, because uh, a new comment came in and someone was like, is this entire first episode just menus and character creation? Ugh, this is the worst. And I was like, welcome to Pathfinder. Um, <laughs> get comfy. Uh, this is the whole game. Yeah. Um, anyway. What's up, girl? Did you see that? My sister has all three of her empty-headed friends right on our tail. They used to follow her around in Kadira. They know both of us very well. Couldn't we just send them away somewhere? Oh, and by the way, hi! Uh, I want to know if... For okay, I'm going to kind of speed through some of this. That's reasonable. Who wouldn't want to know about their subjects and companions? Tell me your story. We we've already we already know most of this. Um, 
Not that's entirely false, but what is the truth, generally speaking? I've always known what I was worth and a lot I deserved. Superstitions stands in the way of achieving a goal. There's no reason to shed a tear. Better to use the same superstitions to your own ends. I'm a sane Kadir. They idolize Asimars almost as passionately as they hate tieflings. So I thought with a little effort, I could pass as one. And my mastery of fire could be mistaken for a sign of Saren Ray's goodwill. Of course, a masquerade of that sophistication required a little outside help. And I found it. I made a contract with a resourceful devil who calls himself the Forefather. He wove an illusion over me and my sister, hiding our tiefling features from everyone. I hope this doesn't shock you. It's not that I wanted to bind myself to a powerful and devious creature, but what choice did I have? To wash bowls at a car caravan serai until the end of my days? Oh, Lord. You tried to fix an injustice that came upon you as a curse from a cradle. This can be understood and forgiven. I'm just the incarnation of goodness and innocence, aren't I? Anyway, it's all in the past now. The contract was annulled by my death. Now I am free to live as I wish. What was the agreement you made with the devil? I'd have to spend the whole evening telling you all the details. Contracts require thoughtfulness and accuracy, especially ones like this. But to put it simply, I was to do as he commanded. And in return, he granted me a powerful illusion. The contract included a number of caveats and limitations. In particular, the tasks that the devil would give me could do me no harm. The contract didn't involve my soul. On the contrary, it bound me until my death, but no longer. What did he tell you to do? You'd be amazed. They included fighting evil. The forefather comes from a line of apostate devils, or Dima Vigas. They live for only one goal, to turn people's souls away from serving any god but Asmodeus. Our Dima Viga made a nest for himself in Kadira long ago, finding special pleasure in enslaving the servants of Sarenray. Nothing helps to turn souls away from faith better than the fanatics of the faith. You have no idea, Ko, how often a zealous servant of the good in their struggle against evil has pushed others in the arms of that very same evil. That's why the forefathers sent me to serve the followers of the cult of the Dawnflower. Unlike the old church of Serenray, those cultists celebrate the goddess more for her warrior aspect than for her mercy. Tristian's the opposite. My duties included seeking out secret cults of demons and daemon worshippers and other springs of evil in the sunswept land of Kadira, real or imaginary. Questions, suspicions, public trials, one or two exemplary executions, and fear sank its claws into the hearts of the weak and doubtful. How could a good goddess allow this? What if I'm next? Those who entertain such doubts would soon hear a knock on their door from the messenger of hell, offering a simple solution. Protection and prosperity in return for their souls. <laughs> oh! What was it like living as an Asimar? We lived a few years under the disguise, gaining a certain status affluence. The crowds of gullible suitors. In times, I found a patron among the many followers of the Cult of the Dawnflower. A man of great wealth with a personal army of mercenaries who roam the lands of Kadira night and day, seeking out monsters for those who, and those who worship them. I quickly became his confidant and joined that army. All as forefather desired. Perhaps this is why the devil agreed to give us the appearance of Asimars. Everything was going perfectly, but then Kaliki, that silly child, got herself mixed up with a band of tiefling renegades who were too cowardly and stupid to achieve anything in their lives by their own wits. They organized something like a secret society and gathered in the evenings in their huts. They spoke of opening everyone's eyes and making them treat the outcasts with dignity. Oh, on the night of the... Wait, so I helped them a little and put my patron's people on their tracks. If only I could have kept Kaliki from her foolishness. On the night of the raid, for some reason, I told her the truth. I thought I could explain to her that her actions were threatening our secret. I thought she would see reason. But nothing works out as planned. She hurried off to warn her friends and fell into the hands of the cult of the Dawnflower. Her disguise went un was unmasked, and with it my own as well. Oh, sands and skies, I can't imagine the rage my noble patron felt. His Asimar confidant turned out to be a treacherous tiefling. I had no interest in learning how far he'd go in his rage and immediately set off to flee. Alas, as soon as they found out what happened, the remaining members of the cult of demon worshippers, who I'd once helped disperse, quickly tracked me down. They summoned a soul eater who cut my life short, and my story was at its end. How were you resurrected? You'd better ask Kaliki about that. When she learned of my death, she pleaded to Nethus, a god of unparalleled powers, and his herald agreed to return me to life, but in the state we're in now. Only one of us can be in the material plane at a time. Meanwhile, the other sleeps in a special demiplane. What happened at Jamani's mansion? You know the fun part of our story. When Nethus returned me to life, the poor hungry soul eater started following my trail again. He cannot discover me so long as I live disguised as Casey, but he keeps trying. That's one reason why my sister and I never stay in one place for long. Oh, so the Soul Eater is still following her. Oh. Interesting. So that'll probably be her big quest, is finding and eliminating the Soul Eater. I'd like to know more about you. This this one, I feel like we already, we've already done a lot of these with the other one. 
Uh, do you like it in the Stolen Lands? I prefer large and bustling cities to backwaters. Tell me about your sister. We're at our eighth summer. When Kaliki, the spring of my souls, got angry at me and chucked a bunch of desert thistles into my hair. I had to cut them out afterwards. Oh, man. I want to talk to you what it means to be a tiefling. Admit it. You like my horns. Or is it the tail? <laughs> I do. The horns and the tail. They make you special. And that's it? Karen Sully sways her tail. I've been known to spark curiosity. How are tieflings born? We are born if an ancestor lay with a powerful and evil outsider, be it a devil or daemon or some other dark creature. Which outsider do you and your sisters descend from? From a devil. I can't even guess which one. Of all the infernal beings worshipped in Kadira, the whore queen Mahathala is the most venerated. Secretly, of course. Servants of her court frequent these lands, and they leave trails. <laughs> Tell me about Kadira. Okay. Do you think the disk of the eclipse reacted strangely? Maybe. My sister and I have tried to figure out what happened, but failed. We need a real specialist in this sort of magic. A specialist like I can't even imagine. I can definitely say that the disc hasn't been destroyed. It seems to have become a part of my connection with my sister. Maybe we'll learn more at some point. Tell me, why did you stay here after we found your relic? A fair question. You see, there's an important detail about how I died and returned to life. I was killed by a repulsive creature called a Soul Eater. After a spellcaster aims it at its victim, the wretch will chase it tirelessly and endlessly. But when I returned to life, the Soul Eater lost its prey, but it's still chasing me, and it might show up at any time. I won't let it hurt you. We'll deal with the beast if it shows up. I like your confidence. I have a penchant for the strong and confident. Uh, want to spend some time together? You do realize sooner or later, you and I will just burn this house to the ground in the heat of passion, and then the entire capital... Still half asleep, you slip on your gear and suddenly hear the angry snap of a tail against the bedpost. Looking up, you lock eyes with Kaliki, glowering and embarrassed. Ko, you and Kanera, I mean, we suddenly switched, and I... Could you please get dressed faster? <laughs> um... <laughs> Sorry to bother you, I'm leaving. If I throw water on you, would it be considered high treason? Kaliki covers her mouth and bursts out laughing. We accidentally switched in our sleep. I almost fell on top of you when I came out of the portal. We've never had such a silly switch before. Um, You almost fell on me? Huh, now that's something I wouldn't mind. You know what? Canera's enough for you. Of course, my sister usually shares everything with me. Oh, what am I saying? That's it. Goodbye, Your Grace. Oh, oh she doesn't like us. Um... Whoops. That's fine. If we got fire but no water, I'm okay with that. That's cool. Okay, it's blue. Glad to see you at my hearth. She bites the whispers. Have you seen sweet teeth? I can't get them out of the house, and I'm so scared they'll suspect something. Uh, okay, I'd like to ask her questions about her past. So this is, again, this is like the same thing just through her mind. Let me go through most of this here. Man, she has a ton of dialogue. Um, hmm. Time to jump Livian turns. Yeah, we're, we're just asking you the exact same question. I'm, trying to, I'm like scanning it to see if there's any like major new information. No. You have me racking my brains. A girl shows up acting like she wants to be a friend, and the next moment she turns her nose up acting like seeing me for the first time. And you can just begin to imagine what it's like for us. Nice. Um, let's talk about how you are now. Oh, my lord. <sighs> okay, I just... I kind of just want to keep playing the game right now. Um, I found a piece of paper with your poems. Sweet Lindsay writes real poems. Mine are no more than an attempt to talk to myself. I think your poems are beautiful. Do you mind if I read them from time to time? The girl is a little embarrassed. As you wish. I don't like to hide things from those who are close to me. I've done this too often. Okay. Uh, I wanted to talk about what it's like to be a tiefling. We'll bust through that real quick. I'm t I thought there was a quest here. Uh, tell me about Kadira. Strange what happened to the Disc of the Eclipse. Why did you decide to remain in my lands? 
The first sentence is fleeing Kadira, the place in the world I can call home. I probably should have brought this up myself, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. I'm very worried about the forefather, the devil my sister made a contract with long ago in Kadira. Kanera thinks he's no longer a threat since her death and the contract, but I don't believe such a creature can ever leave us in peace. Oh, this is this is her saying, yeah, about the Soul Eater. Okay. So I guess there isn't a quest to get right now. Unless it's this one. We have to read Keston's note. Let's do that real quick. The people are afraid, Your Grace. I believe they've been forgotten. A wild mob is a force to be reckoned with. It was with a heavy heart that I left your castle, but my hope is that once the com common people, I'd be able to track down the source of the disease. I was recently informed that one of the squads scouring the outlying regions of Camelins had encountered a mysterious shrine. Okay. Okay, so he gave us he gave us a location to go look at for the shrine quest. Great. We'll actually do that before we go to the shrine quest area. Uh, okay, and then... I'm a village. Witch hunt. We need to talk to the Sweet Teeth and try to find a way to spare Casey of their troublesome presence. Okay. Let's see if you can complete my task. Ready for anything, even more. The picket fence at Oleg's trading post is tilted. Go there and fix it. Tilted? We'll fix it up and paint it in no time. I think that's probably the safest of the options. The others looked like it was kind of... Could have been rude. Go to the goblin village first? No, I th Doesn't one location show the goblin village? I want to do that one first. Okay, I, I guess that's all we can do for now. That's fine. Oh, I need to... I need the other one. Wait. Even though she's water here... Um, that is not far. I have the fire one in my party. I want to keep the... the de I don't want the, the heal one. I don't want her, because I already have Tristian for healing. I'd rather have the fire one for DPS. How long am I in the, having this game? Uh, 24, 30, almost 38 hours. Yeah. And I'm not even halfway done. 